everyone and welcome to this video going over the proposed changes to the game in patch 3.3, starting off with the nurse. The nurse is getting a nerf. Each of her blinks have a 3 second recharge timer after being used, and the time remaining on the recharge is indicated by looking at her killer power in the bottom left corner. So if the nurse blinks, she has to wait 3 seconds before she can blink again. And this timer starts when her fatigue does. If she double blinks, then she has to wait 6 seconds before she can blink twice again. The blink recharge will pause as long as she is holding a blink, and the recharge is completely reset when she blinks. So you better make sure that your blink has recharged all the way before you actually blink or else you lose the progress on that blink recharge. This means that the nurse has to be more careful about using her blinks. Now she can still blink immediately after a fatigue, but only if she used one blink. They have also reworked all of her add-ons, changing their rarities and effects. So let's take a look at her new add-ons. The Matchbox is now an ultra-rare add-on, and says it removes one blink charge, and increases the nurse's base movement speed to 4.2 meters per second. The torn bookmark now says, adds one blink charge, the nurse can no longer blink through solid objects. Bad Man's Last Breath says hitting a survivor with a successful blink attack grants the nurse the undetectable status for 16 seconds. This effect may only be triggered once every 60 seconds. Campbell's Last Breath says after repairing from a fully charged blink, the nurse immediately blinks at half charge in the direction she is currently facing. Jenner's last breath, after blinking, allows the nurse to Im immediately blink back to her original position by pressing the active ability button. Must be triggered before the nurse succumbs to fatigue. Kavanaugh's last breath, tremendously increases max blink range, tremendously increases max blink charge time. Anxious gasp. Blinking past a survivor causes them to scream and awards 200 blood points in the devious category. A toxic respiration says mildly decrease blink fatigue duration. Fragile wheeze considerably increases blink recharge speed. Heavy panting considerably increases max blink range, considerably increases max blink charge time. Spasmodic Breath says hitting a survivor with a successful blink attack disables the nurse's ability to blink and increases the nurse's base movement speed to 4.6 meters per second for 60 seconds. Badman Keepsake says hitting a survivor with a successful blink attack causes their auras to be revealed when healing or being healed within a 28 meter range for 60 seconds. Catatonic Boy's Treasure says considerably reduces extra fatigue from chain blinks. Dark Kingshire says moderately increases blink recharge speed. Dull Bracelet moderately decreases max blink distance, increases blood points for precise blink score events by 100%. The Pocket Watch moderately increases the length of the chain blink window. Metal Spoon hitting a survivor with a successful blink attack causes their sounds of pain to be moderately louder for 60 seconds. Plaid flannel allows the nurse to see the blink target locations. White knit comb moderately decreases the distance of blink lunge attacks, increases blood points for blink attack score events by 100%. And finally, the wooden horse moderately decreases extra fatigue from missed blink attacks. And those are all her reworked add-ons. Nurse changes aren't the only big things in this patch. They have also adjusted the medkit add-ons, anti-hemorrhagic syringe, and the styptic agent to be very different than what they currently are. The anti-hemorrhagic syringe now says you use this with your secondary action. The affected survivor will passively gain a health state 8 seconds after use. The time required is modified by perks and add-ons that affect healing speeds. This effect is cancelled when the affected survivor changes health state or is picked up, and it depletes the medkit on use. As for the styptic agent, it now says, when the styptic agent is used on an injured survivor, they gain the endurance status effect for 15 seconds. 
Any damage taken during that time that will put the survivor into the dying state will instead apply the deep wound status effect. The survivor has 20 seconds to mend themselves. If the survivor takes any damage while affected by deep wound or if the deep wound timer ends, the survivor is immediately put into the dying state. Use this with the secondary action and also depletes the medkit on use. Let me know what you think about these changes to the nurse and the medkit add-ons in the description below. Now for the final big change coming this patch, the archives are going to be introduced. Now since the archives is a complex system, I'm going to make a separate video explaining this in detail once it releases. But just to give you a quick summary, Basically, there will be this tome with a series of challenges, which you can see here. And you can get to this archive because there is a new button on the main menus with this I symbol on it that says the archives that you can click on. Clicking on it will take you to this new screen where you will see a series of challenges. And completing these challenges will award you blood points and memory or log entries. These memory and log entries will reveal some lore about the game, which you can see in this other tab. There are going to be four levels of challenges, but these challenges will be unlocked on specific dates. So this is the introduction of season rewards. Another mechanic of the archive is the Rift, which is like a battle pass. There will be the free top tier, and then you can buy the premium rift for a thousand orc cells to get better rewards for each tier, which you can see below the free tier. With the archives come this brand new cosmetic category called charms, and you can equip up to three charms. For survivors, they will appear on your waist, and for killers, they will appear on their hooks. The content in the rifts will appear in the shop about six months after the rift closes, i.e. when the season ends. So the Archives is bringing a lot more to Dead by Daylight by introducing these unique things that you can only get for a limited amount of time. And that covers the major changes in this 3.3 public test build. There are a lot of other changes in this patch, but I will go over those once the finalized patch 3.3 comes out. I just wanted to cover the big and controversial topics of this patch. So let me know what you think about it in the comments below, and if you have any questions about what's coming in this patch, feel free to ask as well. I hope this video has helped you out, and thank you very much for watching. As always, good luck out there in the fog, and see you next time.